Hi, I'm Beth Probst of Apricor. This video is a recording of an online webinar that took place on October 6, 2020. Parents of kids in grades 6 through 10 will find great value to watch this video to learn about all of the educational options that our kids have during the high school years. Joining me on this video is Alicia Mowry, Public Information Officer of the Delaware Area Career Center. The DACC serves six different districts in Central Ohio, but all students in Ohio and most students across the U.S. have access to similar programs. This discussion can be helpful to so many families. If you're in a district served by the DACC, connect with the team there by visiting their website, www.delawareareacc.org, or by calling the enrollment coordinator, Mary Siegman, at area codes 740 201 Take a moment and connect with my team at, at the core by subscribing to the jam-packed um, newsletter that covers high school and college planning um, every single week. Connect on gettingatthecore.com slash subscribe. Finally, quick tip for you, um, as you watch this thing on the settings wheel and then clicking playback speed. Thanks so much and enjoy the webinar. All right, well, I'm Alicia Mowry. I am the Public Information Officer at the Delaware Area Career Center. And all that means is that I do uh, our, all of our communications. So anything that comes out of the district, uh, mailers, social media, website, things like this, where we get to share with community, uh, that comes from my department. I am also a mom of two boys in the Worthington City School District, so uh, I'm excited to share this information with you today. And my name is Tiffany McComas, and I work in the public relations and the uh, recruitment and enrollment departments. Uh, I also have three girls, and we are in the Big Walnut uh, School District, so it's really fun to be able to sit down with other with other families that have the same questions that we all have, worry, you know, worrying about our kids and where they're going to be in their future. Tiffany, I don't think I knew you had three girls. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, my hat's, my hat's off to you. I have one, and that, that's enough. Um, so my name is Beth Probst, and I lead an organization called At The Core. And we, um, we're based in Powell. I'm an Olentangy mom. There's a set of us uh, that do stuff, all kinds of stuff to help families navigate the path from middle school to high school and then for most families um, on to college and career. So certainly at some point our children's formal education will end and they will, um, you know, not live in our basement anymore and um, go make that successful transition to what comes next and, and we support families in a lot of ways along the way. So this intersection between at the core and DACC is a really cool thing that really started a number of years ago um, and it, it is primarily to help families open their eyes to all all of the options that exist for our kids late in high school and especially to take that deeper dive into um, the amazing options that exist at the Delaware Area Career Center <clears throat> that you may not know about. So um, just to give you a quick idea of how we're going to spend our time today, I do have some questions for you that I'm going to open up with and then I will lead you through that that kind of that 5,000 foot look or view of those educational options that do exist for all of our kids. And then we'll spend um, really about two thirds of our time, kind of the back hour talking about those, the super electives that exist at the Delaware Area Career Center. We know what kinds of questions that you ask. We've been doing this for a number of years, but we um, welcome your questions all the way through. And I'll, I'll talk in a moment about how we're gonna interact with each other, but we will cover everything from what programs exist, what those 28 programs are, all the details that are probably on your mind. How does the student engage with them, the logistics, the scheduling, the transportation, the cost? How does somebody apply for one of those programs? All kinds of things. You're gonna um, walk away with a, a much greater knowledge of, of of what these options are and how your student may um, choose to take advantage of, of them if they find that interesting as they get older. So uh, today's session, interacting. 
we're going to do a couple of things. Um, we are going to chat. So uh, those of you that were on early got to do uh, a little bit of um, practicing with the chat. So we'll do that, that again in a moment. We'll use that Q&A tool. We're going to ask for you to use the Q&A tool when you have a question. So um, if, you're, if you put your question in the chat, it can get lost as we answer, as we're really communicating in the chat. So put the question in the, in the question and answer. And then finally, we're going to do a couple of polls. So I'm going to stop sharing and um, in my slideshow, sorry, clicking all over the place. And uh, these questions help us help you well. So I'm going to launch this first poll. Um, the first one I would love for you to take a minute and answer. Hope you guys can see that. Oh, they can. Yeah. I always wait for the first one. I'm like, <laughs> first one come in yet. Yay. All right. You guys are doing great. Wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. We've got almost everybody voted. So I'll go ahead and end, end that poll and share the results. Most of you have middle schoolers. Oh, oh, middle school. <laughs> Mm, that's all I'm going to say about middle school. And then um, another good chunk of you with freshmen and sophomores. So good. Wonderful to know. Um, I'm going to stop sharing that poll and then go and show you the second poll. This helps us know where are you from? So what district do your kids attend? And almost there. Alicia, can you see the, the panelist view of the poll or do you have to I wait? Cannot. I have to you wait. You cannot. It's, it's a mystery. Oh, I yes. like that. I, I have the con. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll end that poll and share the results. And not a surprise, right? So of the six districts that um, are served by the DACC, by far the largest in enrollment is Olentangy, and therefore um, not surprised to see that, and yet thrilled to see that everybody else, um, with the exception of Delaware City Schools, is represented today. So welcome, 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 everyone. I will stop sharing those. And then one last question, because we're living in such an unusual time <laughs> when our children may be here with us. We wanted to know if we had parents only or parents and students that were joining in today. All right, got almost all of you. Great job, you guys. You guys are awesome pollsters. I'll share those results. And almost all of you are solo parents sitting like us, um, and, and a, a few of you have a kiddo on board. So welcome to the students. I'm glad that you came um, to spend some time today and learn about these options. Um, good, good, good. All right, I'll stop sharing those results. And a few more questions for you. So as we get ready to do these questions, um, I'm going to open up my chat so that I can see that and um, look at your answer. Oh, I'm going to share the survey highlights. So, um, so uh, Alicia likes to point out some of you probably already answered those questions about how old your kids are and what district they go to, and you did that in the survey. But um, we need, we do need to know kind of who's on board with us today. So sometimes people answer the survey but may not be able to join us live. So uh, I did take a, a quick look back at those survey results. I had asked specifically what really brought you to uh, to spend this time with us today, and there were some wonderful um, words about you know wanting to understand the options, the choices. I didn't want to miss out on knowing about something that my kiddo might find valuable. So that was it's exactly the right mindset to be in um, to join us today. And there were. Um, a few programs that were mentioned. So if there are others that you would like to tell us about that you know your student has an interest in, <clears throat> it would be great to pop over into the Q&A, put that in the Q&A. But the ones that were mentioned specifically by folks that filled out the survey were um, application development, mm -hmm. animals, and physical therapy. So love those, those are all excellent. So, all right, chat. This is the audience participation um, extended version. So I'm going to ask you to find your chat tool. And unfortunately, so we usually do these in a library or somewhere where we can all sit together in a circle and eat a bagel and have some coffee. 
Um, and we can't do that now. So this is the next best thing. This is our virtual version of that, but we still need to hear from you. So I have my chat tool open on the side here and I'm gonna be watching your answers to these questions. This really helps us help you well. So first off, um, how, simple question, how did you hear about today's event? And be as specific as you can. If you heard about it, you know, in an email, if you can remember where that email came from or um, <clears throat> Julie Fiesel posted on Facebook, social media, email from me. Yes, I send a lot of emails. Sorry. <laughs> sorry that's my job. Um, cool announcement. That's good. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. The Sunbury Galena Moms group. That's such a great group. Um, principal, email, email. Okay. Awesome. Good. Worthington Moms group. Yay. Yay. That'd be you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Big Walnut PTO. Yep. They were um, kind enough to post it as well. So, Awesome. Good deal. Okay. Um, thank you. Next question. Um, this is yes or no. Before you saw that invitation and chose to come and join us today, had you heard about the Delaware Area Career Center? Yes or no? Hmm. Holy cow. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. All yeses? Oh, wow. Holy Toledo. Alicia, you're, you're doing a great job with your Yay. communication. Yeah, yeah. Well, anybody driving by, right, for the last yes. year or so on, on 23 would see that construction and has to wonder, what the heck is that? Um, so for those of you that said yes, yes, gorgeous new facility, you're going to see some pictures today of that facility. So, um, and we'll hope to have you there sometime soon. Um, for the people that said yes, I need to know what specific impression do you carry in with you right now about the DACC? What words or sense do you have of DACC? And I know it takes you a minute to type, so do 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 do. And we have heard all answers. Um, yes. we, car we carried in our own uh, ideas when we all started with uh, like learning about the Career Center. Oh, look at Christy, super electives, lots of options. Um, Pavel, yes, seamless. vocational school. Yes, Scott, um, alternative to college. Opportunities for non-traditional training and education. Great resource. Um, Melissa doesn't know much. Um, ooh, interesting, Lisa, very valuable and underused in Westerville. Looks much different from my school days. Oh yes, had always assumed it was uh, an alternative to traditional school. Assume courses are primarily technical. Nothing specific, neighbor kid went. Um, oh, our 2015 grad didn't hear much from Westerville South High School. Trade school, alternative to college track. Mm -hmm. Students I've met from DACC have been professional and polite, seem like they're getting a quality education, Wonder. don't know anything about it, additional curriculum to traditional high school. Wow, you guys are awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you. Okay, so, so a few of you mentioned, um, so Lori said it looks different from my school days. Um, let me explore that one for a second because we, okay, let me, let me, um, I'll ask, do you remember the Career Center from growing up from your own high school days? Can you give me a yes if you remember the Career Center from your own high school days? Okay, so um, remind me, or uh, tell me what you remember from that. What do you remember? Who went there? What was it for when you were in high school? Trade school only. Where all the troublemakers, the kids who didn't do well in school would go. Yes, for students who struggled in traditional school. Yes, 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 trade skills. Stigma, Abigail, you said my word. Did you read my notes? <laughs> yes, right there, I love it. Okay, cosmetology, um, auto mechanics beautiful welding beauty school not college bound you guys are on it okay now now i needed to take that little part of what you knew <laughs> scrape it out no i'm kidding um i won't make you do a, a self lobotomy but i do want to give you um a spoiler alert that 
things are different today. They're really different. We, we get to take this time today to show you how things are different and talk very specifically about why and how they are different for our kids and how um, it can be an option that where you might have normally thought of it that way and set the option aside because your kid was heading to college and therefore the career center was not a place where they should go. I would like you by the end of our time today to recognize that you can go to the career center and go to college as well. It just depends on what job path and track you're looking at and what education is needed. And um, I'll also share quickly, just personal, um, my own kid right now, right this minute, is in the building where Tiffany and Alicia are. So I have a student who is a senior in the digital design program at the Delaware Area Career Center. And she just received yesterday her second college acceptance. Um, I know she was super excited. That one was, yeah, we didn't realize that was coming in the mail. Um, came in the mail. And so, so two of her four colleges that she's applied to, she's already been accepted to. And we're at October 6th, that's pretty good. So, um, so her resume and her transcript were super strong and actually got her some amazing um, scholarships at both of those colleges. So um, DACC plus college equals um, thumbs up, good stuff. So we'll talk more again about how that, how that happens and how a student can, um, can really um, take part in those um, options that exist at the DACC. <clears throat> All right, a few more fun questions for you, and then I'm going to unpack your educational options. When you think of the future, so go forward and think about when your kiddo transitions from their formal school to work. I want you to envision their successful transition. They are ready to be successful in their transition. What words mm, maybe, maybe define or what words really describe who they are, what adjectives define who they are that you make you know they're ready to be successful? How do you know they're ready? What are they? They can, they are, give me some words. This would be again, you in the chat. Confident and organized, confident. Oh, I love that one. Good communicators. Responsible, yes, yes. They can load the dishwasher. Please <laughs> tell me they figure out how to do that. Oh no, gosh, I'm it's not just my house. Okay. No, no, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hands-on experience, motivated, confident, up for the challenge, confident in their career choice, mm -hmm. hardworking, go-getters, um, self-sufficient, able to speak to strangers confidently, thinking early on what they want to do. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful. And, and I'll say it again, not living in your basement. Um, confident in their career choice. Wow, Kara, that is, that is beautiful and succinct. Um, and I, 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 I'll go even a step further and say, you know, I would love for them you know, to wake up in the morning and be heading to their job and to really think not only am I confident, but I am joyful that I get to go do this. I get to go do this thing and they pay me to do it. It plays to my strengths. It, it's right in line with my interests. That's what we want for our kids. Um, we want them to be able to live independently, um, doing what they love. Yes. Love that. Okay. Awesome. Couple more <sighs> for many of us. Um, I didn't tell you as well. I have a, I, so I have that senior and I have a kid in college. Um, so I am um, in the midst of uh, forking over some ginormous amount of money along, uh, you know, as a family with my husband um, uh, to, to get kids to college. So here's the question. Yes or no, or maybe does college guarantee success? And if you want to give me a yes, no, um, or maybe you can expand that and you can kind of give your because. Oh, um, Amy's got a no with a no. <laughs> she, she put her cap la caps lock on. No, not at all. So not at all because, ooh, yes, depends yes, on career. Mm -hmm. Keep going. You need a skill set that's useful. I have the impression that it opens more opportunity. Mm -hmm. Our college student is now earning his welding certificate. Love oh, yeah. that. Love that. That there's a story there, no doubt. Um, depends on how you use your skill set. Good. Good. Last thought. We have to put, oh, most college graduated people aren't working in their fields. Yes. Um, we have to put cost of college mm -hmm. on the table. I have to put it on the table. What are your thoughts on the cost of college? 
Everyone fainted. <laughs> I was going to say they pass out. Unbelievable, scary, crazy, too high, enormous, expensive, frowny face. Probably not good ROI. Yeah, probably not worth it, worthy value. Too much, too much, no guarantees, no guarantees. Ridiculous, scares me. I have five kids. Ah, yeah, you need more H's, Karen. Ah, um, need to take advantage of community college classes. Oh, you guys are going to love hearing about College Credit Plus. Um, and I am hopeful it will change because the world changes to keep costs down. All right, awesome. So beautiful. You guys are exactly in the right mindset. You are primed for this conversation. Um, I am going to shift into uh, sharing with you now um, a little bit about those educational options that exist kind of from that 5,000 foot level. And then again, we'll, we'll do the deep dive into those elective career tech lab programs that exist at the Delaware Area Career Center. I want to keep this conversation going today, though. That's what's key to us. And so again, the way to really keep this conversation going with us, uh, when you have questions, it's going to be through that Q&A tool. So post that question in there. Tiffany will be watching those. She'll lob them into us so that we um, so that we can can answer them and kind of have the opportunity to share that question with everybody. So I am going to share my screen again and um, get to the right one and click this. All right. So can you see um, the little Apple guy? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So the key to, so many of you have middle schoolers. So you're on the cusp of starting that, um, those high school years. And you know high school's different, and we'll we'll talk about that. So for those of you that have um, freshmen and sophomores, you're in this now. You're kind of kind of ankle to hip deep in it. And uh, what I'm about to share with you is 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 still uh, exactly relevant, and it's just probably more right on the tip of your of your um, experience. So planning out all four years with a pencil on paper is one of the most powerful things that you can do to help your child understand all of their options and prepare for those options. It's with a pencil because it can change. Um, they are teenagers. They absolutely um, do not uh, I, I, typically get into a spot and stay in that spot. But if you can go through this exercise, you're going to see some real opportunities that emerge in the plan as you put it together on paper. So a couple inputs that you're going to want to use, you'll need to know what classes your child has access to through their high school course catalog. We will send this for all six of the districts in our follow-up email later today so that you can click through and take a look. Um, <clears throat> Olin, Olin Tandy's course catalog, I think, is like 70 pages long. It's crazy. It's classes and classes and classes. Um, just wow. The other piece is you need to be aware of your state's graduation requirements. So in Ohio, um, what we don't want is for your student to pick these amazing classes out of the course catalog, plan out their four years with all these fun classes that sound really good, but get to the end and be like, whoopsie, I never realized that I needed, you know, four English classes. Now I'm behind the eight ball. So what that planning for the future can really look like, again, um, mapping out all four years of high school using your uh, course catalog, um, looking at those graduation requirements for English, for math, three science, three social studies, <clears throat> they need health, PE, some electives, some art. Your map or plan can look something like this. So freshman and sophomore year, you can see that this student is kind of front end loading a lot of the required classes into those first two years. And then in junior and senior year, you can see that um, there really are a lot of options and space, especially during that senior year, <clears throat> excuse me, for them to take what they would like to take. Um, I think the real opportunity, oh, one thing I do want to point out, uh, eighth grade, it's common in all six of our districts for students to um, maybe experience their first high school credit class while still in middle school. So this student you can see is taking World Language 2 as a freshman. That means that they would have taken World Language 1 whether it was Spanish or French or German, whatever language it was, in their eighth grade year. Same thing can happen with the first math class, which is algebra. That could be taken in um, the eighth grade year. So again, 
junior and senior year is when um, things really open up in their schedule and it's freed up. They're, they're able to take really more of what they would like to take and the opportunity comes with what what are they going to do their junior and senior year how will they fill up their day um i don't know if you caught this but senior year this student really only needed two classes to be able to graduate from high school none of us are thinking that our senior in senior year is going to school for two class periods that would be a missed opportunity so really what are they going to do with the time that they have that is the question <clears throat> So as we unpack those educational options, I think it's important for you to remember, um, number one, that those first two years are really that academic foundation. It's a place where a kiddo can and should get a solid start, really chip away at um, a whole bunch of those requirements, getting those out of the way so that they are freed up to take what they want to take in the back half of high school. But this won't happen magically. It really does require planning and forethought. It also requires, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, it's just, I'm going to get froggy, right? So just what I need. And I also just got braces, so that probably doesn't help anything either. Just, I'm a mess. It's not pretty. Um, anyhow, the buckets, I'm, I'm going to describe these kind of as different buckets of options that are available to your kiddos. And um, in general, they turn on for that back half of high school. There are um, some exceptions. It is, it is entirely possible that a student could take an advanced placement class or an international baccalaureate class if you are a Westerville or Worthington family earlier than um, junior year. College Credit Plus is a program that's actually available to students in grades 7 through 12, but in general, students are really um, taking part in these options later in those high school years, typically junior and senior year. So what are those options? Um, I'll kind of describe each of of them briefly, and like I said, I've got the we've got the deep dive into the into the DACC programs as uh, how we'll spend the majority of the rest of our time together. But um, advanced placement, I think it's important to understand. You may have some experience with advanced placement. You may have um, some concept of what advanced placement classes are. Your kids may have some concept, but just to give you kind of the overall bigger picture, AP classes are classes that are taught. Um, at a more advanced pace and level than a traditional high school class. So it's for a student who really wants to step on the gas pedal academically in a particular subject, they can choose an AP version of a class as long as the, the district offers that. So I'll take um, as an example, um, a student may take their sophomore year, they may take uh, US history, kind of a regular college prep version of U.S. history, or they can say, no, no, I'm into this. I want to do this. I'm up for the challenge and choose to take the AP version of the class. Taught with um, uh, at a faster pace. It's taught by a high school teacher. It's taught at more of a level of a college class, but a student is actually taking, it is a high school class. They are earning a high school grade on their high school transcript. That grade is GPA um, impacted. It's, it has a little, an uptick to it so that if a student gets an A in that AP class, <clears throat> Instead of having a 4.0 go onto their transcript, they would have a 5.0 go onto their transcript. Um, if they get a B, they have a 4.0. So it really is trying to balance out that more difficult class material um, to not discourage a student from taking that harder class. Um, if they take the harder class and get a B, it's the same as if they took the less hard class, right, and got an A. So that's kind of what the GPA um, business is all about. Students, though, tell me they're taking a college class when they take AP, and I will tell them that there is a college element to it in that, again, it's taught at that higher level. There is also a single test that that student will sit for at the end of um, the class. It happens in May, so all across the country on the same day in May, every kid that took AP U.S. History will sit for a three-hour AP exam. How they perform on that exam that single three-hour test is part of what a college will do with that, um, that performance. So if I got a five, a four, a three, a two, or a one, 
I can take that score. And as I um, make the transition to a college that I'm going to go study at, I can say, hey, I got a three on my AP US history exam. Will you give me credit for this? And different colleges will say yes or no, or maybe it just depends on their credit transfer policy. It depends on what your major is. It depends on a lot of things. So it's a maybe. Um, but that's what AP classes are. Just hope that gives you kind of a good a good overview. I, I don't know that I'm being as clear as I, I'm sure you'll let me know if you have questions, but um, International Baccalaureate. So for Westerville and Worthington only, this is a similar program to AP. It's a lot of the things are the same to what I just told you with the exception of um, students will often tell us that those IB classes tend to have more um, more collaborative, real world, global feel to them versus their AP classes where they feel like they're just memorizing things and reading things. So that's a little difference between the two. Um, the IB program has the same sort of thing where a student will sit for a test at the end. They can earn a seven, six, five, four, three, two, or one. Colleges will or will not do things with how you performed on that test. Uh, the only other difference is that the International Baccalaureate program has a suite of classes that a student can take in junior and senior year. And if they complete them, they can earn um, the IB diploma. And it really is, a, it's a very cool program. So a little bit different, again, not available to um, anybody except uh, Westerville and Worthington. College Credit Plus, third bucket. So we talked AP classes inside the high school, IB, College Credit Plus. College Credit, and, and let me just tell you as well, because this is going to come up. Can I do, can my student do any or all of these, or do they just have to pick one? totally mix and match. Your student can mix and match any or all of these, whatever makes sense and whatever they've designed uh, to fit inside their schedule. College Credit Plus is a little bit different. Um, it is actual transcripted college coursework that your student will take while duly enrolled as a student in their um, home high school. So again, I mentioned this before, it's available to students in grades seven through 12. Um, students have to qualify to participate. They typically qualify through taking a college entrance exam, also known as the ACT or SAT and scoring above a readiness benchmark. So if they score above a certain level, then they are able to, um, the door sort of opens up for them to take college credit plus if they would like to. When a student takes College Credit Plus, they are actually enrolled at the college where um, they're taking their College Credit Plus classes. And there's something like 80 different colleges in um, the state of Ohio that offer um, or are aligned with the CCP program. So um, very common here in Central Ohio for kids to take their College Credit Plus classes at Columbus State, just because it's very easy and accessible to students to take um, classes through Columbus State. So when a student takes College Credit Plus, they are duly enrolled and they are earning simultaneous college credit and school credit. And they earn it at, um, at kind of a, a rate that I wanna mention. So if a student takes, for example, very common for a student to take maybe College Credit Plus, English 1100. So the very first English composition class that, that gen ed, lowest level English class that they can take in college. When they take that class, it's a um, three credit hour, one semester class in college. If they um, take that class at Columbus State, finish it, get an A, a couple things happen. One, that, uh, that class gets etched onto their high school transcript as a full year of English credit. And it also gets that same GPA uptick that, um, that the uh, AP and IB classes get. Um, here's the, the, the best part that families would tell you is that um, as long as you stay within the boundaries and guidelines of the program, and as long as your student passes the class, you will, as a family, have no money that comes out of your pocket to pay for those college credits. So um, your student can earn up to 120 college credits under the College Credit Plus um, program guidelines. Uh, and I mentioned before that my own kiddo is in the DACC um, digital design program in the afternoon. In the mornings, she takes all of her academic classes um, at the at Columbus State through the College Credit Plus program. She also squeezes in one more class back at her home high school. So, um, so that's CCP. And again, mix and match. And then Tiffany, I know you probably got some questions on those. I'll get to those in a second. But electives inside your high school, let me do that last one real quick. Um, 
So these would be things like, um, think of them like small bite, interesting classes that your student might want to take. It might be a business class, an accounting class, or a personal finance. It might be a food or cooking class or fitness class or mythology or jewelry or you know, that whatever they might want. It could even be like, um, like a, a graphic design class or a programming class but it's gonna be kind of a small bite. So it's probably, usually electives are one semester long and um, they're just one class period long. So it, it's a great way for your kiddo to stick their toe in and try something, but it really is quite different than the super electives, the bigger programs that they have access to at the Career Center. So before we step into those, um, Tiffany, do I even wanna look at the questions? <laughs> There's only a couple. <laughs> okay. The first one is you touched on a little bit on uh, how students qualify for CCP. Uh, how do students qualify for AP and then for the IB program? Do you know that? Yeah, typically they are, um, you know, look for your teacher of the prior class to help guide your students. So, so like when a student um, is in ninth grade and they are enjoying um, world history and, and they're excelling and they love history, it's quite possible that their teacher will make, help make that recommendation or guide, guidance and say, you know what, you'd probably really enjoy AP US history and you seem like you're up for the challenge. So it's, I, look, I would look at that teacher recommendation. Um, in the end though, it really is a family's decision of, of whether, you know, what classes their student takes, um, but their counselor and their teachers will give them that guidance. All right, and then the next question, how early or what year can a student start taking CCP? In seventh grade. So they can. Do I know any seventh graders who are taking classes at Columbus State? It would be an unusual seventh grader, but the program was designed by the state to be open um, to any qualifying student in grades seven through 12. Um, I so you can as early as seventh grade. Most people don't, you know, when we're, when we're looking for challenging and appropriate work for our children, we're looking for work where they have um, a reasonable chance to be successful. And so I would look for some of those other clues, like, you know, I, if I had a kiddo that I thought might be ready for college level coursework in seventh grade, I would probably do some outside testing. I might do some IQ testing. I might certainly would take the ACT or SAT early to start to get some other markers, right, to, to look at um, who this child is and what they're capable and ready for. Because we want to set our kids up for, um, again, partaking in things that they have an opportunity to be successful in. Good question. One, one more question. Does a PSAT score count for admittance? Do you know that? Um, for admittance to um, the College Credit Plus program, yes. I will look that one up. So because, so what happened this past spring um, when COVID hit and kids couldn't take the ACT and SAT the right way, um, the, the folks um, in the Ohio Department of Education shifted around a lot of the criteria for College Credit Plus and they had, they put them in place temporarily. One of the big things that they did is they made it, um, they made it just beyond GPA. Um, so if a student had a GPA of 3.0 or higher, that was the bar to get into CCP. So um, I'll make a note and make sure that we send uh, where that guidance is on current um, qualification for CCP, but they have not announced, I, they're temporary, they have not announced what next semester's criteria are. I think that as soon as we have access to the ACT and SAT that we'll go back to um, being that pretty, no, being that normal um, qualifier. Okay, so then electives outside the high school. So we've already kind of given you the, 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 the softball, Alicia. We've said it's different. I asked them to scrape it out and to know that things are, are different, but it probably makes sense to go back and, and think a little bit about, you know, that history of career tech and what was, what was there when we were in high school and why was it like it was? And then, and then really that helps lead us into how it's different. Absolutely. So I will touch on uh, the history, but I will also tell you that um, as best as we normally do these in person. So we're looking to all of you to nod and smile or to know and grimace and, and kind of help us guide this conversation to make it exactly what you want it to be. So because we can't do that, uh, continue to put those questions in the chat. We'll stop every once in a while and just check in and make sure that we're covering what it is that you uh, want to know about. So uh, with that, 
I will rewind back to the 1970s. And uh, back in about 1974, all of the area school districts, and this is not unique to our county, but all the area school districts decided that we needed a school uh, for students to go to that was too expensive for any one district to house. So this school is going to have the equipment that students needed to work on in order to have good jobs after high school. Uh, so we worked directly with uh, industry professionals. We figured out what the paying jobs were, uh, and we created, at the time, what was called the Joint Vocational School District because it was jointly owned by uh, Big Walnut, Buckeye Valley, Delaware City, uh, Olin Tangy when it was just one school building. And um, some of our original programs, because we were looking at the jobs, some of our original programs were horseshoeing and stenography because that was what was out there. That's what we knew would make our students successful. So if you think about how quickly business and industry has changed since the 70s, um, that is exactly how quickly the Career Center has changed. And, and my best comparison is, is what we used, for those of us who were alive in the 1970s, uh, what we used to talk on the phones at the time. You know, it attached to the wall, it had the spirally cord, you could only take a few steps away from it. Um, now our phones are massive computers that we carry around everywhere with us in our pockets. Um, so take that equivalent of, of your phone um, and attach it to the career center. That's exactly how quickly we've changed. Now we have uh, programs like bioscience and application development where they're programming the apps that are on our phone. Um, we have exercise science where they're studying all about the body and health and keeping us all healthy. And then even the original programs that we had, some of you knew what they were, you mentioned them, um, automotive programs where they were learning to work on cars. Well, our, our cars are rolling computers and students are uh, learning how to diagnose all of the issues in those computers. And even their textbooks are a higher level of reading than our AP English books because of the technology that's involved. So that is a quick, fast forward through about 45 years of, of Korean technical education history, uh, but know that we are still moving at the pace of business and industry. We are flexible and we are always offering um, what is out there in the industry for our students, whether it's um, right after high school or after college, we're preparing our students for both and balancing that with what uh, our students' interests are. What are the high school students interested in learning because we have to have a balance of both and we're looking for um, matching those students up with their future dream careers. So, so it's different. Mm -hmm. It's been updated to today, right, to the needs of our community mm -hmm. um, as they exist today, which are of course different than they were back in the 70s. Um, it's probably good. So, so I, I think folks would like to know how really is it different? What are these different types of programs um, that exist in these super elective career tech labs? And what does it look like? You know, let's paint a picture of how it's different than a traditional middle school or high school classroom that we're all familiar with. And the benefit of doing this virtually is that I can share some photos. Some pictures! I can. Um, let me get this into presentation mode. All right, can you see it? Yes, beautiful. Perfect. Okay, so uh, for those of you who said you've driven by, um, this is what our new campus looks like from uh, State Route 23. Uh, we have a big new beautiful facility that is absolutely supporting all the creativity and technology that's going on behind these doors. And I just want to touch on, uh, Beth mentioned that we have about 28 programs. Um, this is the list, and I will send you this list. You don't have to memorize this list, uh, but just know that there'll be a quiz, a quiz later. <laughs> this list exists. Um, so each one of these programs offers our students the foundational knowledge to shoot off into a number of careers within each uh, field of study. So I'm just going to jump right in and use these as some of my examples. Um, the two words, as you look at any of these photos, the two words I want you to keep in your head are confidence and clarity. And some of you have mentioned that this is what you want for your students. This is what we want for your students too. Uh, all of these programs are providing our students with um, the, that foundational knowledge, the opportunity to research, the opportunity to decide, I like this or I don't like this. Try on that career and then graduate from high school with the co confidence to know that you're either jumping into the right career for you or you're following the right college major that's for you and have that clarity to know that this is the right path. So the photos you're looking at here, uh, all three of these photos are our digital design program. And we have in all of our programs, 
what's called personalized learning plans. So our programs have 25 students in them. There's one instructor that's dedicated to these students and we'll get into some of these logistics, but these students are here for a three hour block of time with a teacher who's dedicated to this topic. And each of these students is following a different path. Um, you might have some that are doing a radio show, some that are producing a television show, some that are doing graphic design. In that lower right-hand corner, she's working on a, a Wacom machine where uh, students can uh, design graphics straight onto the screen. So uh, each student is able to create their own path for success. There's no lecture and then a standardized quiz for everyone. It's lay out your path, talk to your teacher about what it is that you want out of this education, and then your grades and your success are based on your own goals. So, so these programs, again, just to, just because you're, you're stepping into the logistics, you've mentioned they're there for a half day. You've mentioned the personalized learning um, programs that are within that. So, so it's a set of students in this classroom for three hours all together with one instructor. Mm -hmm. And they're all using the equipment and technology inside that lab over those two years, yes. right? To, so per doing a first year in the program and then a second year in the program. Awesome, good. Yes. So most making... these, yes, most of these programs are for juniors and seniors. And I'll get into some of these logistics. I just want to paint the yep. picture and have that visual for you. So I have beautiful I, one more set of photos. Um, and these are just a few of our health programs. And um, our health programs really consist of health technology, medical assisting, pharmacy technician, dental assisting, uh, bioscience, and exercise science. And I mentioned before that we move at the speed of business and industry. We did not always have this many health programs, but what we saw over time was that the health and IT programs especially uh, were very popular. There were lots of jobs waiting for students after high school and college, and there were lots of students who wanted to come into them. So we took health technology and realized that uh, there's a certain point where students get into learning about working in the medical field and they start working with patients and then they say, I don't necessarily like touching other people. It's not what I want to do. So we added medical assisting, very similar program, but now they're not touching students um, and they kind of veer off at a certain path. We added pharmacy technician a few years ago because that gives uh, students some background knowledge on what it's like to work in the medical field. They're memorizing drug names uh, and they're learning how to work with doctors. Uh, we just recently this year added uh, exercise science so students are learning about um, health and wellness, being uh, personal trainers. And then we also have dental assisting up there in the upper left-hand side. So just as, a, as an example of, we're constantly looking at the careers that are available to our students, where their interests are, and adding programs, taking them away when we need to, uh, and, and creating those opportunities for our students that are uh, timely and that are going to give them that success they're looking for. Love that. You know, another example, the other one that really pops to my mind as a, as a recent change was uh, the addition of cybersecurity. Um, yes. You know, another one of those that 10 years ago wouldn't have necessarily been on anyone's radar. And now there's a huge need for employees who are equipped in cybersecurity skills. And so, you know, you added that program because as you said, you move at the, at the speed of business and, and really to serve the business community. You know, the, the goal is to take kids and have them leave here with the skills that will help them move toward careers in the area. Mm -hmm. So our, our students, um, no matter what program they're in, end up working uh, with business professionals, uh, learning all of those things and applying it to the real world. So that's just a couple of photos just to kind of get you to picture what, what it looks like inside of our building. But I do want to touch on just some of the logistics so now we can understand how some of these things work. As uh, so we mentioned, we have 28 programs. Uh, each one of those programs shoots off into um, an endless number of careers and part of being in one of our programs is researching all of those careers. A lot of students come to us not knowing what all of their options are. Um, and then they spend that time researching and almost changing their college major while they're still in high school, uh, doing that in a safe place where it's still okay to change your mind before you're really invested, whether it's with money or with time. Uh, this, so our students come to us as juniors in the morning 
they are in that lab program. And when we say lab program, we're talking about those 28 program options. They're in that lab from 7.50 to 10.50. So that's a three hour block of time doing a deep dive into a topic that they love. This is the joyful moment of their day where they get to do something that really interests them and will pay off uh, in the end. The second half of the day, they're still uh, completing those academic requirements. They're doing their college credit plus or the academics at their home high school or academics on our campus we'll, that we'll touch on a little bit later. But, um, as seniors, that flips. So as seniors, they're doing their academic classes in the morning, however that looks for them. And in the afternoon, they're taking their lab program. And for a lot of our seniors, when, however we can manage it, um, by the end of their senior year, we want them out into the real world. We want them working with business and industry. Uh, students who are going right into work or college first, it is so helpful to uh, work with professionals. Um, they get to put those professionals on their references and they also have that hands-on experience to decide whether or not this is right for them. It's, it's like the beginning of their, of their professional training. You know, I mean, they, they have to do things like, um, you know, learn how to email people and communicate mm -hmm. with it and show up on time and what to wear and what to say. And, um, and they're doing so in that really that pre-professional way while still in high school, right? Juniors Absolutely. and seniors in high school and getting exposed to what those jobs really look like on the outside. Yeah. Yes, awesome. These, these same employers end up hiring our students. They participate in mock interviews. The very first time I ever interviewed with a real actual job interview that mattered and our students are practicing with uh, mock interviews with real professionals. They know how to dress, they know how to present themselves on day one. So those soft skills are so important. And they've been building real world projects inside the lab on a daily basis. And, and that's what ends up being the fodder for those discussions that they have with someone that they're in a mock interview, right? It's not just here's my GPA or here's the classes I took. It's here's this thing that I built or here's mm -hmm. this problem that we wanted to solve. And um, one of the other interesting things about the DACC is that often um, things tend to be very uh, collaborative also. So, so groups of kids will work together on something. They may have different skill sets and interests that, that clip them together, but that's really very much um, aligned with how work happens in the real world. Um, so it's not just sitting at the desk and you know doing something or listening to a lecture and taking a test. It's very um, hands-on and actionable and collaborative. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I'll shut up. That's okay. I saw someone in here um, mention app development and I can tell you that this year they are basically starting their own mini business and they're collaborating with the other programs and they are branding it, designing it, and they have, um, everyone has a different job and a different role. So um, it's going to be a great experience for them and I, I'm excited to watch that roll out. Love that. Uh, so we had mentioned we're located on State Route 23. Um, that is our main campus, but there are a couple of programs that it just makes sense to house these programs somewhere else. So uh, there are three of them I want to mention. Um, the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium School is the only one like it in the state. It's housed at the Columbus Zoo. Uh, the classroom is sort of underneath the Polar Frontier Polar, frontier polar Bear exhibit. Um, the students work directly with the docents at the zoo. So the agreement we have with the zoo is every project our students work on, which um, are college level thesis projects, have to benefit the zoo somehow. So all of the projects are approved by the docents at the zoo. Uh, at the Delaware County Fairgrounds, we have our equine science program. And that's at the fairgrounds because our students work directly with horses. Um, everything from cleaning the stalls to learning how to train the horses to learning what kind of medications and how to treat their health and their illnesses. Um, so that they can uh, just explore all the careers that would be involved in um, horses or just large animal maintenance. And then we also have wildlife and resource management at Camp Lazarus. And this is the Boy Scout camp across the street from our main campus. And uh, this is where students are going to be exploring everything that involves being outside. Uh, they're learning about uh, water maintenance and bug identification. Uh, so it just helps them to just have the outdoors right there at their fingertips. So that could lead to career in forestry or with park service or or even environmental science if that's the way that they wanted to go. So, you know, I think that that just um, stresses a point you made earlier that each of the programs really are the launch pad to a whole wide variety of careers that that come from those first experiences. So good. Those are so three are off campus because there's also always exceptions. Um, how about transportation? 
Uh, so transportation is provided by the associate districts. And when we say associate district, we're talking about the, the home district that you all come from. So the Olentangy's, the Westerville, the Worthington's. Um, each district provides transportation. So uh, if you're an Olentangy student and you are a bus rider, you will get on, you know, go to your bus stop in the morning, get on a bus and ride to your Olentangy High School. An Olentangy bus will then take you from that high school to the ACC. The same thing happens in reverse. Uh, it happens at midday for the students who are with us just for that lab period. Uh, and then again, it happens at the end of the day for students who choose to spend the whole day with us. And those are students who would take their lab program and their academics with us. So transportation is provided. That is um, absolutely essential for our students. And then we also have plenty of parking for those who choose to drive. Got it. And then speaking of exceptions, uh, we had mentioned that most of our programs are for juniors and seniors. So any student who's interested during their sophomore year is when they'd really want to research these programs and apply to attend their junior and senior year. One of those exceptions is pharmacy technician. And again, we're being flexible and offering exactly what our students need. We know in that program they can get the education that they need uh, to earn their certification at the end of the year. And we'll touch on the importance of certifications later. Uh, they can get that in one year. So there's no point in having them for two full years. So uh, that's a one year program for seniors only. And I know some of you are probably thinking, I have a middle schooler, this is so far away. Um, I'm here to tell you that the years will fly by. And um, yes, if, you're, if you just have a sixth or seventh grader, I promise you, you will blink and they will be scheduling for eighth or ninth grade. And, and as I showed you with that picture of, of laying out all four years, you know, on, on purpose, you know, with a pencil on paper, being able to do that planning and strategic course and curriculum planning in that freshman and sophomore year is what makes the ability for doing a program like this and or College Credit Plus and or AP classes, all of those things are made so much easier with that forethought and planning. And it does go quickly, I promise. And a bunch of you have sophomores, so you're right in it. You're in the time when we, um, when if your student has this interest that they would be actively applying and we'll make sure to talk about all those details in a moment. So um, one more last thing about cost and then, um, and then we'll go to Tiffany for some questions. Absolutely. So uh, one of my favorite things to share is we are a public school. Again, we're shared by all of your districts. So we're not an, an isolated entity. Um, so there's no tuition. There's no extra tuition to come. Um, as, to, as uh, people who live in Delaware County, your taxes, a little sliver of your taxes go toward the Delaware Career Center, but because it's shared among the whole county, it's just a, a small percentage. Um, but each course does have a small uh, lab fee, and these lab fees go towards equipment that they use while they're here as students. It goes, uh, that equipment is something that they take home with them after they graduate. Um, so there's no additional fee or no additional tuition but there usually is a small lab fee and that varies uh, by lab. So you just wanna take a look at that when you're considering a different, you know, different programs. And it would be the stuff that would support them in that program. So whatever that may be, whether that's software or, you know, in the culinary program, it might be, you know, nice. kitchen, kitchen equipment. Exactly, yeah. perfect, good, okay. okay. Stop sharing just for a second so we can check in on questions, see how we're doing, make sure we're answering everything that you are curious about. All right, so I have one question about the competitiveness of a program, specifically the zoo program. The, specifically zoo? Yeah. Okay, so it, it does vary by program. Um, there are some programs that were one year, it'll be exploding and there'll be a lot of applications and then the very next year, um, there's not nearly as many. So it, it varies year by year. The zoo program is one that um, it is popular. There are a lot of students who apply and uh, one of the things about the zoo program that makes it also special is if we have a program, because there is a career center in every county, if we have a program that someone else's career center doesn't have, we can accept students from neighboring counties. So our zoo school program is very unique. Uh, we get a lot of students from Dublin and Hilliard, so it opens up a whole new pool of applicants that can apply to that program. Um, it also has a slightly different application process. So we ask a little more from those applicants. We ask, uh, we ask them to come in for an entrance exam. They have to get letter, letters of referral from some teachers. Um, so that one is a little more competitive to get into. But in all of our programs, we're looking for the right fit. We're not looking for 
uh, 4.0 students who have never missed a day of school. We're looking for students who have an interest in that, that um, industry, who have a passion for learning about this. And we know that when they're excited, they will show up. And when they're excited, those grades will follow. And there was a question as well, I can see it in the chat about how do they apply, what happens if, if there's more that applies. So we will get to all those application, I hate to do that right here because we've got a, a whole spot where we're going to talk about how they apply and, and et cetera. Um, interesting question though too about the male-female ratio yeah. in the IT programs. Um, so you, I don't know if you can see this behind me, but I went to Purdue and I actually studied IT at Purdue and I'm a woman. So I'm how, so I, I, and we were 50-50 back then. I haven't, uh, I haven't asked you about yours. I don't know your ratios of, of male, female. We would love to see more girls in IT. And that is one thing that we're working on. Um, we have a career readiness coordinator who goes around. Um, she works for us, but her job is to go around to all of your schools and talk to middle schoolers and early high school students about career exploration. And there is a large focus on trying to encourage uh, females to go into the engineering programs and the IT programs. Uh, but those are still going to be male dominated um, programs. But the interesting thing about our programs is, is when students come, um, they're surrounded by students that come from all different areas, from all different schools. Uh, they have, they, they're different in so many ways, but they all have this interest. They all have this yep. one common interest. And so from day one, um, they, they click and they, they understand each other's jokes. They, they get each other's humor um, and they make lifelong friends. So we want more females in those non-traditional programs. Um, we, we would love to have more males in some of the more female-centric programs. Uh, and we are working as hard as we can to kind of even out those numbers. Love that. Great question. Tiffany, others? Yes, um, opportunities for sophomores. Oh, to learn more? Okay. Well, I think just in general. So I don't in the CBI and then changing of the, um, the, the, the engineering program. I wonder if that's a parent that may have known about right. the engineering. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we do have uh, what's called career-based intervention for freshmen and sophomores. This is a program where there's a student who may be identified as needing more help in some areas, socioeconomically or uh, credit deficient or something like that. So their counselor will recommend them for this program. And while they're taking those programs, part of it is to explore all of the other junior, senior level programs uh, at DACC. There was, for anyone who had been paying attention over the, year, the last few years, um, we had a three-year engineering program. Uh, good news and bad news, that three-year engineering program that only accepted a certain amount of students has now been broken into two two-year programs for juniors and seniors. And again, we're looking at what interests our students, what is in the best interest of our students, and we realized that they came in uh, wanting two clear paths. And so instead of lumping them all into one program and then helping them kind of customize that as they went. We went ahead and broke that out into engineering technician and uh, a class called uh, robotics and automation. So that will but help students kind of- But they're it. each, they're two, two year programs. And so as opposed to starting that sophomore year in a single engineering program, they mm -hmm. won't begin as sophomores. And aside from the career-based intervention, um, special opportunity for younger students, all programs are essentially junior and senior programs with the exception of pharmacy technician, which is a one-year program, primarily just for seniors. Everybody get that? Everyone has it memorized, right? Every <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna, there's gonna be a quiz. We're gonna have a quiz. So, um, okay, Tiffany, what else do we have? Yeah. I have a question about open house, but we'll be covering that later, so. Yeah, we'll talk about, um, yeah, the uh, application process and how to engage. Um, so we talked about fees to attend. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about transportation. Um, we talked about them spending three hours inside that lab program. Um, it's probably good to maybe just mention when a student is in the lab program, you talked about the personalized learning plan, mm -hmm. they really are taking classes that show up on their transcript. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So uh, we had all sort of mentioned that, you know, we carry some kind of a stigma with us or a memory of what career tech was like when we were in high school. Uh, and I cannot promise that there won't be college admissions officers who maybe carry that with them as well. But uh, again, we're not a standalone high school, so we don't give your child a standalone transcript. Uh, the classes they take with the Career Center show up on your school's transcript, and they just show up as 
a list of classes that they took. So um, I know some of the electives um, could be jewelry making, could be um, photography, could be just a series of things that they, they show some interest in. Um, what will show up on your transcript now is a series of classes that are specifically focused in one area. Uh, it's not going to be a big red flashing light that says, I went to a career center. Uh, it'll show that early on, you really took the time to delve deep into this topic. And then when, it, when a college admissions officer sees this, they're going to see that you're dedicated, you've been dedicated for a long time, and you're a likely good candidate for their program in their college. Makes sense. And right alongside that, though, in the junior and senior year, so they'll, there would be those, those classes that they took inside the lab that show up on that transcript. There's also going to be, right alongside that, though, the other academic classes that they take that same year. So it's not like they end up, sometimes people ask, you know, will they end up like, without certain credits to graduate from high school. Oh, no, no, no. That's where that four-year plan, mm -hmm. I, as I showed you, you know, so primarily these lab programs are fulfilling elective credit. They still ha are responsible to take all of the classes that they need to, to not only graduate from high school, but also to be prepared for if they're heading to college to prepare for college level coursework. Um, but they do it all again with that appropriate plan. So awesome. Um, all right. I think we're good. Tiffany, anything else come in that we want to, before we shift back into kind of talking a little bit more about, um, about the process to engage? Just another question about grades and um, GPA, that kind of stuff affecting um, acceptance. And that's, that's it for now. Acceptance so. into college or acceptance into the career Acceptance center? into DACC, I think. Okay. Okay. So we'll touch on that towards the end when we talk about how to apply and, and what we look for in, in a good candidate for a student. Um, while we are on the topic, we're not too strayed from the topic of engineering, uh, I do want to pull up this uh, presentation one more time. Uh, see if I can. There are, and as you pull that up, there are a lot of, um, of students, uh, it, you know, in, in our six districts, we hear a lot of students that have interest in engineering. You know, they might be good at math and science. And so someone will say, you should be an engineer, but they might not know a lot about what that is. So this video is an excellent representation. Um, if you wanted to talk over that about what the, yeah. Yes. So um, this is just gonna play for about a minute and a half. Um, but this is just a quick, uh, uh, tiptoe into the engineering program and you'll see it, it said engineering technology there at the bottom that's because that was that three-year engineering technology program so what you're looking at is um, a mix of engineering technician and then the robotics and automation program uh, this is uh, one of our labs uh, here at the campus and for the Olentangy families this um, is similar but different than the Olentangy STEM Academy. So the Olentangy STEM Academy, um, I just wanna to touch on the differences there real quick, is a four-year program, similar to DACC, it's an offsite uh, sort of elective course for your students. Uh, they apply during their eighth grade um, and they can get kind of a, a um, broad background knowledge into all things science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, that gives them an opportunity to explore, just like everything we're, we're talking about, they explore all of the different options available to them. Uh, if they decide that they like that engineering portion of it, they can shift over to DACC for their junior and senior year and take uh, this engineering, one of, one of our engineering programs. And people ask us all the time, what's the difference between STEM and uh, the DACC engineering program? So. Um, if you can remember some of those images that flashed by, uh, we had mentioned early on, we exist to be expensive. We're here to share the cost among all of the districts to have large scale equipment, like what you saw, all of the machines that students operate, the robots that they program and use. Um, those are things that we have that can't be replicated at every district. So the Olentangy STEM Academy will give them that ability to research and decide what they like, and then they can shift over to DACC if they want to, and focus it on engineering. We also have students who come to us for things like bioscience, uh, health technology, any of our um, health or IT or engineering programs is a, is a good fit for those students. 
That's a great description. So I, I would, again, just being an advocate of every family understanding all of the options, I would highly recommend that if an Olentangy family had interest in the Olentangy Academy or the STEM Academy, sometimes it's called, dig into that. Um, watch the videos. Uh, I hope perhaps this spring you'd be able to go um, on an open house or a tour there. Um, one thing I noticed though, uh, side by side, again, the differences are the equipment. Um, mm -hmm. So what the DA CC is able to put into one place in in our county resource is certainly um, at a different level than what can exist inside the the Olentangy Academy from a STEM perspective. Awesome, good, thank you. That was that. Good, and so engineering, um, the two engineering programs, those are two that offer a lot of credentials, um, and we'll we'll touch Perfect. on credentials. Um, well, now let's talk, let's touch on credentials now. Yeah. Um, so uh, in addition to elective credits, sometimes college credits, sometimes high school credits that these programs can offer, uh, we also train our students and have them prepared to pass uh, credentials towards the end of their school year. And these are credentials that employers absolutely value. They're credentials that will follow our students through high school, through their careers. And uh, we've had employers walk into our programs and say, if you can, if your students can pass credentials here, I know they can walk into my shop on day one. They can walk into my um, high tech it, uh, IT industry uh, building and they can absolutely do the job and then pass additional credentials that I will offer them and they can launch a career right out of high school or right out of college. So anybody in the in the healthcare profession, um, just to, to pick on health technology, I know one of the credentials that they can earn is their STNA mm -hmm. while a junior, um, they, they also, I believe, um, had the option to do some phlebotomy yes. uh, certification. Mm -hmm. um, that's on the health side. In engineering, it would be more technology oriented, same digital design. They're sitting for the um, national tests on the full Adobe suite. So Photoshop and Illustrator and in, in, in design. So they're practicing those skills, sitting for that national credential, putting that credential on their resume. Mm -hmm. And then of course they can use that credential um, if they wanted to right away, you know, during those high school years or even, you know, working part-time during college or as they transition out into the working world. Absolutely. So credentials uh, are good. Credentials and, and these employers yeah. are so interested in our students having these credentials. Um, Worthington Industries comes in and works directly with our engineering students. Ohio Health has set up shop in our program to help students become certified in phlebotomy and then they go out and um, actually practice drawing blood. So if you go out to an Ohio Health facility, it might be one of our students drawing your blood that day for your, for your blood test. Love that. Love that. Awesome. Okay, so I think you'll probably unshare this engineering piece and maybe as we do, Tiffany, is there anything that's come up as we get ready to transition into talking about the application process? I did get a question about how businesses can connect with our programs. Okay, um, hold on, there we go. Uh, so if you, so as a business person getting connected with our, with our students, I would say uh, when you get the follow-up from us, you're going to get a follow-up email from us after this. Uh, reach back out, just hit reply. That's going to come to my inbox uh, and let us know what industry that you represent and what you're interested in. Uh, we'll connect you with the instructors from that program. Uh, this year's a little different, just like everything else. We normally love to have visitors in here talking to our students, having those practice interviews, uh, interviewing students. And um, this year we're, we're doing things just a little we bit. We do it this okay. way. Yeah, yeah. Which, which frankly is the way that business is doing it. So they, you know, our kids need to learn how to do that too. I think this will be the new normal on some level. Even as early as last spring, uh, McGraw Hill was holding uh, digital or uh, virtual interviews with our digital design students. Uh, so they jumped on that right away. Good stuff. Yes. All right. So Anything I'm else? just doing a quick time check and we'll need to make sure I know folks want to know about um, applying and taking those next steps and how, how to really engage, you know, when will their student learn more, who will they learn more from, um, and keep those questions coming in the Q&A and Tiffany will lob them to us. Okay, um, so I'm just going to pull this up again mm -hmm. uh, so everybody can see the list. Hold on. Clicking, I'm clicking. We we much prefer doing this face to face, but but we're you're doing great. Oh, screen sharing has failed to start. Please stand by. So, um, okay, 
you yeah. have you have capability to do it. I don't know why. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try one more time. Do you have to stop your video maybe in the background if the video is mucking with it? Stop. Um, so we can talk will, it. Yes. So I will tell you that normally this time of year we are getting ready to uh, open up our doors and bring a bunch of people in through our building. Are you seeing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yay, it worked. Uh, so we, we love to have visitors, uh, you know, seeing is believing, and we love to have you in to talk to our instructors, to talk to students, to see what goes on in the labs, to see students in action. Uh, so we are going to make that uh, happen as best we can virtually. Uh, we will have a mini website we're developing, and one of the big things to look out for is this virtual self-guided 360 degree, 60 degree tour. Um, we will send that right to your inboxes when it goes live. But this will be sort of um, like a Google map style uh, tour of the facilities where you can kind of fly around the building. You can click on pop-up videos. You can click on photos. You can see interviews. Um, our admissions officer, our enrollment coordinator, her name is Mary Siegman. She will also be holding live admissions office hours and I will send those dates to you as soon as they are locked in. Uh, and this is a time when you'll be able to jump online and it'll be less of a one-sided conversation and more of a chance to talk to her, ask her all the questions that you're going to have after you've seen all of this information. Uh, we're, we're also producing some student interview videos. We're looking at having an alumni panel discussion. And then all of those employers I told you about who are so interested in working with our students, uh, we'll be doing some virtual lunch and learns with them so they can share with you as parents what they're looking for in future empl employees. I'll also say there's excellent information today on the website. There is like a fact sheet on each one of the programs. There are pictures and videos and details about what kinds of things that they will learn, um, which program might be right for you. So be sure to explore. Don't, you know, you don't have to wait for these to come. There's a lot of great stuff that's out there today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so Let's jump to how students can apply. Yep. And then uh, if there's more questions later, I can go backwards and, and address those. So our online application, which luckily has always, has been online for a number of years now, uh, it will show up on our website. It will go live uh, November 18th, I believe. And again, I will send that straight to your inboxes. I will email you and say the online application is going live. Here's where you can access it. I'll send that link to you. Um, the application process is fairly simple. All you have to do is go to that website, you create an account using your, um, your email address and some basic contact information. You are going to provide the email address of your student. And I will say here, if you use the email address that has been issued to you by your school, they do a great job of keeping your kids safe. No one from outside that district can email Locking. your child. <laughs> Don't give us that email address. We won't be able to communicate with them. We won't be able to send them information. So use the Hotmail or the Yahoo or the AOL or whatever email address that you're using uh, for your student. Uh, we'll ask you to select two programs of interest, a first choice and a second choice. And it's my hope that every student gets into their first choice program. But if we have too many students enrolled or if something should happen, that that first choice doesn't work out, we will call you and talk to you about the option of the second choice. As we discussed, there are some programs that have a lot of similar similarities and may still be of interest to your student. Uh, we'll ask three essay questions. Uh, one of the essay questions is directly related to that 360 degree tour video and it will ask you after, after uh, doing a, a thorough research into your program of interest in that tour, what did you learn about it? So we're looking to make sure that students have really taken the time to explore and learn as much as they can. And then you submit that application. It goes to your uh, counselor at your school. They send us uh, some information that we need, such as your child's transcript. Um, and then from there, we look at grades, attendance, uh, and discipline issues. And the grades, um, I don't want that to scare anybody away. We just have a minimum GPA. It's, it's a 2.0. And um, that's just to show that the students can, you know, put, put in some work. We look at attendance. And I always say we, we can't send welding homework home with you. You don't want that being done in your basement. So we look at attendance just to make sure that students are willing to show up. And it's, it's a three hour commitment every day, right? Yeah, so if we've got attendance, yeah, that's missing, a lot. you know, missing. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's, it's huge. Yes. So um, that's just one thing that we look at. Uh, 
and then discipline issues. Every student, you know, really wants to be here. They've applied, they've done all of this work. Uh, we need to make sure that we're all here for the greater good. We're all here to support each other. Uh, so those are the three main things that we look at. Um, and again, you know, when we know that when students find that passion, when they find the thing they want to do, that grades and the attendance will follow. So we're looking for students who really are interested in this industry or in this field of study um, and that they want to be here. The last thing I will share with you about application is that there is a priority window. So it'll open around November 18th. Any application that comes in before January 15th uh, is treated equally. Any application that comes in after January 15th sort of gets put to the bottom of the pile. Um, if a program is oversubscribed, I know we have that question. Yeah. Um, if a program is oversubscribed and we have more applicants than we have seats, we have a waiting list. And we know that, you know, I'm going to stop sharing so that we can talk. About, okay, so we know that we're talking about high school students and high school students will change their minds. What they want one day, it, it may change. And that's, that's the right time to do that. It's the right time to explore and decide this is right for me. No, it's not. This thing over here is right for me. So um, we do have a waiting list. So if a student changes their mind, we just call the next person on the list and fill that seat. Um, if you are one of the people that changed your mind, uh, that is okay. If you submit your application right away in November because you think that's the right thing and then you change your mind anytime before the actual school year starts, you just call us, you tell us that you changed your mind. We may ask you a couple questions to make sure that this is what you want and then you are free to go back to your school. But you could change your mind not only and say, I don't want to do a, a lab program and I want to just go back to my home high school, but you could also change your mind that maybe you'd want to try to shift into a different program. Yeah. And, and I'm sure if there was space available and if I met the re requirements, there might be a path for me to do that even as late as summer. Yes. Yeah. If there's okay. space available, we will shift you into the program that, that is the right fit for you. We're not looking to fill every seat. We're looking to give um, the students the ability to find the right fit for them so they can continue to explore. And let's finish the rest of that if they change their mind, um, play out that thought process. <laughs> let's say let's say I'm a month in and I change my mind. Um, yeah. If I'm a week in and I change my mind, how does how does that work out? So all the way up until right before school starts, it is easy enough to call us and say that you changed your mind. Uh, we'll figure out the best path for you. When you come on day one, if you show up and you say, oh, wow, this was not what I expected. This is not what I want. Um, you can change your mind and you can go back to your associate district. They will slot you back into other classes. Um, that is true for the first two weeks of school. After that first two weeks, it's just too hard to catch you up on what you would have missed at your right. school when you, when you weren't there. Um, so after the first two weeks, we really ask that you stick it out through the semester. At the end of the semester, if you really you know, decide this is not the right path, um, first of all, that's great. That is success for you and your family that you have ruled out a whole career or a, a career path um, that you're not going to be paying college tuition for or spending time in the career field um, figuring out how to back out of it. So at the semester, if you can go back to your associate district. Um, if you make it through the whole junior year and you decide you don't want to come back for the senior year, that is okay. You don't have to come back. You can return to your associate district. Uh, we like to assume that our juniors will come back. We hope that they'll come back and join us for one more year, um, which means that if you're a junior coming back, you do not need to reapply. If you're a junior, you just, you just come on back on day one, your senior year. Um, I will say it is uh, in your best interest to be here for the whole two years. That is how our students get the full curriculum. It's how they get the credentials. Uh, if they decide it's not the career for them, they can still graduate with credentials and get a really good paying job uh, while they're figuring out their next step, while they're going to college, while they're trying to figure out what, what it is they do want to study. So those credentials um, are not only for the, the full career that you want for the rest of your life, it's for a good job that can get you to the next step. Yeah, I know a student actually that um, did the cosmetology program, actually um, down in Cincinnati at Great Oaks, um, did the cosmetology program, recognized that she actually did not want to be in cosmetology, and she, she had kind of a side interest all along of interior design, and she ended up... Um, uh, she knew, but but maintained and finished out her cosmetology training 
um, in career tech, picked up those certifications, went to college to study interior design, and guess what she does for her part-time job? So she, of course, is, um, you know, she uh, styles hair, um, uh, cut color, all those things, and makes a lot of money and is getting business experience um, that she will absolutely apply in her uh, life and work as an interior designer. So yes, they change their minds, um, but nothing stops them once they have those credentials from um, they're with them and they can use them to their advantage. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, a couple of other quick things to touch on. I'm watching our time and I know Tiffany's got some questions and I want to make sure um, to just be aware. Uh, two things. One, um, actually three things. One, my favorite, my favorite uh, uh, element or aspect of all of the teachers of the lab programs. This was um, such a mind blower to me, you know, with my kids always having been in traditional school settings. Um, I love the tidbit about where the teachers come from that teach the lab programs. So when we hire for a teacher, we're looking with, for somebody with some really specialized knowledge, whether it's, you know, in engineering or that cosmetology, we're looking for someone who has been in the real working world and knows what's that, what that's like. So all of our teachers in every program, they have experience working in that industry. So when they come to us, we say, that's absolutely wonderful. Um, you have all the industry connections. You know what it's like. You can teach our students. You can hand off your valuable knowledge. Um, now we need you to go back to school in the evenings and get your teaching license so that you can also be a great teacher and, and know all the ins and outs of, of following that curriculum. So um, our teachers are sort of dual um, uh, skilled in being able to teach the, the absolute um, defined and, and specialized skills that they're teaching, but also know how to be a teacher. Uh, so we so value them for, for what they do. Uh, and it's, it's a really unique uh, position to have. Love it. Love it. Um, two more quick rapid fire ones. One, uh, summer camps and then um, the CTSOs. And, okay. then, and then I've got a question for the audience and then we'll open it up to the final questions that you've got looking at the time. Okay. So okay. Summer, summer camps. Summer camps. Um, in non-pandemic times, we like to offer a summer camp to our middle school students. And this is uh, when students can come out for three days over the summer and they take a summer camp that is um, sort of a middle school replica of our high school classes. They're, the camps are taught by our high school teachers. Uh, Beth's daughter came out when she was in middle school, took a digital design summer camp from the teacher that she is taking high school classes from now. And it gives them a, a chance to test that out. So not only are they testing out careers and industries and college majors while they're here as high school students, as middle school students, they can test out what it's like to be a BACC student before they ever even apply. So they touching the equipment there, they've got a, a wide range of choices and it's a nice little small, um, a small engagement with them. So it's not like they, they're signing up for a year of anything, you know, it's like a little, a little taste. Yeah. So that is something else that will hit your inboxes. Um, we're hoping to be able to offer summer camps this summer. So we will see how that, that plays out. All right, and I, were you going to bring up a picture of the um, of the Career Tech yes, student gonna... organizations? While you do that, so I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, go for it. See if you can. So um, much like we're used to sports, you know, in a in a classic middle school or high school setting, there's kind of a sport or competitive element that exists for every single Career Tech program. Mm -hmm. um, so we might know things like uh, maybe you knew Business Professionals of America or the Health Occupation Student Organization or even future. Farmers of America. I mean, those are those are these things called career tech student organizations. And what are we seeing pictures of now? Uh, so these are students um, from our Skills USA competitions. Um, these are pulled from a couple of different competitions. Uh, so students in each program. They may form teams uh, with students in their own program. They may collaborate with students outside of their program, which is my favorite because that's exactly what we do on our jobs. And um, they will create some kind of a project. So the students on the right-hand side, um, this is, a, this is a students from our digital design program. They created just a really heart-wrenching video about human trafficking. Um, the United Way of Delaware County even used it to um, share important information. Uh, and they took it to a national competition. So they, will, they would start out locally, regionally, statewide, nationally. Uh, and as they progressed, 
This is um, awards that they can put on their resumes, in their portfolios. They're learning from their competitors. So at every stage, they're looking to see what their competitor, competitors are doing and stealing some of those best practices. They also have to learn how to present. You can't just be a good coder. You can't just be a good web developer. You have to be able to explain to a panel of judges what you did and why it's important and have that confidence to stand up and defend your work. Um, we also have some students over on the left-hand side from our criminal justice uh, program. This would be law enforcement for us, but the category that they competed in was criminal justice, and they have to show off the skills that they have. They have to pass tests. They have to present to a panel of judges about what they know, different scenarios that they would go through. Um, so this is something, again, that employers are looking for, that they, that they participated, they competed, and these students are being flown all over the country to compete in these national competitions. For some of our students, it might be the first time that they've flown or gone anywhere, and it's just a fabulous experience. Love it. So two quick things as you unshare that, those pictures, love those pictures. Um, two quick things. One, a lot of Olentangy families are familiar. They'll hear in their neighborhood a kiddo that might have been a DECA student. So that is the, that is a career technical student organization for business students, but it lives inside the high schools in Olentangy because those business classes tend to be taught in the, in the high schools in Olentangy. So if you hear DECA, that's the exact same thing that we're looking at here. It's just that they're um, every career tech student for the other 28 programs that exist at the DACC have access to one of those. Second thing, um, the I don't know that you know this, Alicia and Tiffany, but the um, subject of my daughter's main college essay was her experience in um, Business Professionals of America and their their the changes in their competition. So all, all good. All right. So my question for you, you guys did such a good job hanging with us and we will answer. We will stick around and answer. I know Tiffany will toss back to us some of those last questions, but I need you to go back to your chat before you leave us today. Um, this helps us know, um, was this helpful? Was this helpful to you today to spend this time with us? Um, just give us a quick chat. Let us know, was this helpful? And, um, <laughs> oh my God, yes, 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 good. good, yay. Okay, that makes us feel better. We've earned our lunch. Um, yes, good, okay, yes, all good stuff. Um, I really, as an Olentangy parent, um, the genesis, the reason why um, I approached GACC years ago about doing these is because um, I didn't know anything about this. And I was an Olin Tangy parent. And someone said it earlier that their 2015 grad didn't hear much about it from their own high school. It is entirely possible that you can make your way through um, the middle school and high school years and not really ever be um, aware of all the options. So um, I'm very proud to have a drum and a tambourine that that I beat on a on a very frequent basis on behalf certainly of the DACC, but also on behalf of all of the options that exist for our kids. Your kids should. Um, oh gosh, I have a next step slide, don't I? That I that I'm supposed to show. Whoopsie. Okay, not a whoopsie. It's good. I got it right here. But but I was gonna um, use the phrase that you say, which is um, your child's uh, high school years uh, should you know can be customized. I would vote that they should be customized. So um, so thank you. Which is super quick um, on next steps. Uh, so all of this says really here is that you're doing exactly this right now. You're pausing and you're considering what your child wants to do off in the future, after high school, after college, um, and then work backwards, back out of that to figure out exactly what, what is available to you to get them there, whether it's DACC or Olentangy STEM or any of the other options that Beth talked about today. Just explore them all. Ask all of the questions uh, and then work with your child with your child and with your child's school counselors to strategically plan those high school years get that that little quadrant that Beth showed you plan out those high school years know where your gaps are where you can fit things in and then connect connect with us connect with the right people um, go to our website explore some of the programs there you'll get a follow-up email from me that links you to all the right places uh, and those are the next steps that I would offer all of you. And if you've got a, a, a sophomore who you think will want to apply, applying in that early application window, um, you, it opens, it says uh, November 20th um, in that, is, uh, is that date correct? I'm, at, I'm assuming that uh, date It's going to be correct. the 18th or the 20th. Yeah, it's going to be one of those. Somewhere in there. And then um, next steps from us. So we do a lot to support families um, as they're really weighing and evaluating those options. Uh, this fall, we're doing a ton of informational webinars. We've got, <clears throat> excuse me, two on ACT, SAT, 
a money one all about how normal families um, pay for college because because we know it costs a lot. And then um, college research, always happy to answer quick questions. We do private consultations with families, really kind of helping them unpack and evaluate the different options that exist for their kiddos. So I will unshare that. And, um, and again, um, Tiffany, I bet you have some, some questions. You guys are I've awesome. I've got a few, yes. Yeah. Um, how is the application process different for homeschool students? Uh, it is the same for homeschool students. Uh, we would uh, reach out to you and talk to you about your, your um, school affiliation. So it's going to depend on what district that you live in. Uh, we may ask you to enroll at your um, home district so that you're associated with the school and then you would be a student here at DACC during that time. All right, and then this one, I think this program or this question has um, more to do with like dual enrollment. Um, but this question says, I believe some programs require acceptance into CCP. Is this needed before application in addition to the SAT and ACT? Uh, so this is specifically for zoo, zoo school. Does zoo school have a CCP component? It probably does. I, I um, believe it, it does. I think Yes, I think so. But then a student would in order, so like I'm trying to think, so digital design had um, also the opportunity to earn some CCP credits as part mm -hmm. of the curriculum, but a student in, in order to do that had to qualify for participation in mm -hmm. College Credit Plus. And you typically, again, in the past, that's been done just as simply as having a qualifying score on an ACT or SAT. Um, but this spring, some other paths were opened up to um, as, as a qualification process. So um, that would be something if you wanted some more specific answers on that, you know, one of us can can get you those. But we're we are a little I think we're in a murky territory with CCP because they they really are. Um, like I said, they've not announced even for next semester what the criteria are. Mm -hmm. And in my follow-up email, I will show you in a quick little video how to access the fact sheets for each program. And on the back of those fact sheets, it lays out Perfect. exactly yep. what credits are available in every program. Then I have another question that's over in the chat about making sure you receive our information yearly, just because their students are, I think, are a little bit younger, so to make sure they don't miss out on the opportunities. Absolutely. So I keep a special email list just for my coffee chat families. We've been doing this for a number of years. So I start out every school year saying, all right, if your kid has aged out, we totally understand. Unsubscribe from this list. We won't bother you unless you want the information. For everyone else, here we go. And throughout the school year, I let you know when dates are coming up, when opportunities to visit are open, whether those are in person or virtually. Uh, and I will keep you informed at any point when you, if you change your mind that you don't want to come to the Career Center or your child ages out or they become a student and you don't need that information anymore because you're getting information from us as a current student, just unsubscribe from that list and you won't get those anymore. Did you mention as well with the summer camp, you've done something in the past um, where you've given coffee chat attendees a little a little yeah. head start? I usually give you guys about a 24 hour advance notice and, and sometimes that's what it takes because those camps fill up really quickly. Uh, but we will let you know when, you know, we'll give you advance warning. We're having camps, here's what the camps will look like, but then we will um, give you a 24 hour advance notice to be able to sign up for them. Love it. That's all I have. That's it. Okay, That's it. we did good. So I've got I've got mostly orange check marks with my with my with my orange pen that I used today. So um, had to have fun and make it look like um, the leaves are are um, like they are outside. Mm -hmm. So I hope this was. Um, a successful use of your 90 minutes of time this afternoon to really kind of think about all of those amazing options. I hope I got the wheels turning. Um, I hope you now feel confident and ready to take the next steps. Um, know that DACC uh, family will support you at the core, will support you in any way that makes sense. I hope to see you at something else that we do in the future. Um, we will send that email later this afternoon to everyone. And then um, also, I know you'll have an email. I don't know when yours will go out, whether it'll go out today or tomorrow. 
I don't know that either. Don't know either? <laughs> I, I have a third grader <laughs> learning remotely. That's why we need my help this afternoon. So you, <laughs> you, you told me that today, like, like things are moving at that, like, that, like you're moving through jello. So let's just say it's probably tomorrow or that, it, yes, but it'll come. It'll come with all that follow-up information. And you always know that you can contact us um, in any way. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Your comments are so kind. It's good to see. Um, good to see that you felt like this was this was helpful and, and valuable to you today. And we will stick around for another minute or two more while you guys um, say goodbye and uh, and we'll do the same. All right. Great. This was our last one. I know. That one's quick. I know. <laughs> hey, I know. Can we do three more? I, I would do three more in a heartbeat. So, know. you know, you know me. I love, um, sorry, my son was calling. I'm like, gosh, I, you know, seriously, college son never calls me. And I'm like, he calls me. And I'm thinking, I have to hit no, decline. Right. Yeah. So, you know you're busy. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, right. No, you know, funny enough, he, he, if it's anything, it'll be a cooking question. Um, so, which is, which is, which is great. Yes. He seems to think I know how to cook. Um, he really needs to talk to his dad. Um, <laughs> probably so. All right, ladies, I am grabbing the chat. Okay. Um, and Tiffany, any last questions? I don't have anything. All right. Okay, guys. Well, I think we will, um, we will shut her down then and I will hit um, end and end meeting and we'll see you guys later. Thank yeah. You. Be good. Thanks everybody. If you're Bye. still on board, take care. Have a good day.